Petran has just been opened and we have an empty screen and the first thing it may say is what preference do you want to use and we want to use the send a preference. If you're running the TFEA, the Petran thermal version, then it won't ask you that question. It will automatically be in TFEA or you can configure Patran to start always in the send a preference. You can change preferences from analysis preferences and go back to NASTRAN to do thermal stress from your Cinda temperatures if you want. So we're going to follow this menu uh, straight across here. We're going to build geometry. We're going to create materials and properties, add loads, mesh it, run it, and look at results. So let's uh, create some geometry. I'm going to create a couple plates. And I'll take the default, which is one by one, one meter by one meter. I'm working in SI units. And then I'm going to create another plate translated in the X direction, say 1.1, just with a little gap between the two of them. And I can right click and smooth shaded to see what these look like. So we have two plates built here in 3D but they're all in the XY plane. Now we're going to uh, add onto one of the plates we're going to add uh, a box. So let's create a primitive. We'll create a box and let's make it um, like a small box on here. Could be a chip on a board or it could be a box on a radiator panel of a satellite or just some component mounted to a wall. So we'll make it 0.3 in the X, 0.2 in the Y, in point 0.1, in the Z. And for its location, let's put it out kind of offset from the middle a little bit. So this is the corner of the box. And let's uh, put in, we'll move it over 0.3 meters, in X, 0.4, in the Y, and 0 0.05. We'll lift it off the plate just a little bit. So now we have our box. And if we look at it from the side, you can see it's off the plate a little bit. So we're going to show how contacts work and how contacts don't necessarily need uh, parts to actually touch. They can touch, but they don't have to. So we're going to do a contact between this gap here and between the bottom of the box and this big plate. So now the next thing we do is properties. We need to create a material, which we could manually create. Uh, and then we need to create a property. Uh, but let's go in, instead of manually typing in the material information, we'll go into our material library, which is an Excel-based library that you can have your own custom library. You can put the data in any units in the library, uh, or the library Excel file gives you these conversion buttons so you can convert the the library, but when you pull it into Patran, whatever units you have selected here, and I have SI units, it's going to pull it in in those units. So I'm going to bring in, uh, let's bring in aluminum uh, 6061T6 and out of our library in SI units, and if I go to my isotropic materials and look, I can see it's it has SI units for aluminum. So I've just created my material. And now we need properties uh, for finite element modeling. You need uh, properties. So we need properties for the, the plate elements and property for the solid elements that are going to be on our solid. So I'm just going to call this first property plate. And we're going to pick our aluminum. But because the plate doesn't have a thickness, we have to give it a thickness and tell it because it's there's no dimension in that direction. So we have to tell it how thick it is. And we have to say where we're going to apply this plate property and we want to apply it on surfaces one and two and then I hit apply and it makes the plate there so this plate is aluminum a millimeter thick and it's applied to surfaces one and two so now let's create a solid property and I'll call this box this is for my little box and in this case there's no other dimension we need because uh, we don't need thickness for the box it knows that pick application region just the solid one and apply and now we have our box property which is aluminum and applied to solid one. So now we're done here and we can go to our loads. Um, let's put about, um, oh let's put a, 
100 watts into this box here. So I'll just uniformly distribute in the box. So I'm going to do what we call volumetric heating on elements here. And it's a 3D. And I'm just going to call this box power. And we're going to put a 100 watts total, not not a watt per watts per cubic meter, a density sort of flux, but just a total heat of 100 watts, regardless of the size of the box, distribute 100 watts. And I'm just putting constant power, but I could put thermostat controlled power and put a sensor node and, and use proportional or on-off heaters or PID controllers, but uh, I'm just doing constant. I could also make it time dependent or temperature dependent. So uh, we'll take off the thermostat. So we have that, and now we have to pick where we're going to apply it. We're going to apply it to this box, which is solid one. So you notice I'm putting loads on geometry and not on a finite element. I haven't even meshed this yet. It's best to put it on the geometry. Then if you remesh, it will automatically, um, if you remesh, it will automatically apply the load to the new mesh so you don't lose your loads. If you add loads to mesh, to element faces or nodes, and you remesh, then you lose your loads. So this is the best way to apply loads, uh, plus or larger regions anyway. So now we've got a load there. Now let's fix one edge here to 20 degrees and this edge over here to 100 degrees. So we're going to do a temperature and we're going to say cold edge. And let's go and set this one to be 20 degrees. And we're going to want to pick a curve, which is the edge here. It's surface one side or edge number one. And let's do the same thing on the other side. We'll call this hot. And in this case, we'll change it to uh, 50 degrees. And we'll pick this one here, which is surface two, edge number three of surface two. And so now I have that. You can see the zero written on the two corners and written on the two corners, the two ends of that curve that run along the edge. It's not filling it in because we don't have mesh and nodes yet. Um, so now, let's see, we've got um, a temperature load here. Here we have power into the box. Now let's add our contacts. Let's hook these two plates together. So the contacts are under our convection and it's uh, element uniform and it's just called contact and we're going to be hooking a 2D to a 2D and we're going to be hooking edge so edge contact so I'll go under my input and I'm going to say it's an edge contact and I'll give it a big coefficient this is an H value and it will take the area of these edges the length times the thickness and uh, multiply it by that to get a in this case a uh, a watt per degree C uh, conduction across that gap. But we actually put in a coefficient, uh, an H-like value for our contact. And then I'm going to pick the two edges. I'm going to pick, uh, and it doesn't matter which edge we pick for the application in the companion. We'll talk about that in the next load. And I'm picking that load there, and that's going to be tied to surface 2 here. So. Uh, surface 1, edge 3 is tied to surface 2, edge 1. And when I do OK, it's going to draw a little line uh, from one edge to the other, uh, showing that contact in there. And now let's do the box, a box contact. So we'll say this is our box contact. In this case, uh, the target region we're projecting the box face on is a 2D region, but the box itself is a 3D object, even though we're taking the bottom plate, the face of it, but we're taking the face of a 3D object. And let's, uh, so now we need to, to use uh, uh, the surface, uh, and we can pick either top or bottom, it doesn't make any difference, and I'll put the same coefficient, uh, 10,000 um, watts per uh, square meter degree C and then for the application region now it does make a difference uh, 
in, in most some cases it will anyway. You want to pick the larger region first is what we call the application region. So I want to actually pick this whole surface number one is what I'm is my kind of master or what we call our application region and then I'm going to pick the a face uh, this is going to be a face on 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 the box. I'm going to pick uh, this bottom face right here on the box, which is a solid one face five, and add that and apply. And it will draw from the origin of that surface to the origin of this big surface, which is that corner to that corner, and put the draw a line and say they're connected together. So it connects from origin to origin, not the center to the center of a surface. Because it, it doesn't know where this box is. This box can be up in this corner, in this corner, this corner. So it's just showing that those two surfaces are tied together with that contact. Now we're going to mesh. And let's uh, mesh, first of all, this plate. And on this plate, uh, let's mesh it. We won't pick automatic. We're going to pick 0.07. I'm going to mesh it so it doesn't line up exactly with the box. And on this plate here, let's just do maybe 0.1. And so these meshes don't line up along the edge either. And now we got to mesh this box, so that's a, a solid mesh. And I'll just take the default to uh, let it calculate that. And it it meshed the box with a tetrahedral mesh. Uh, and you can see the box doesn't exactly line up uh, with my mesh. It overhangs a little bit uh, into these elements, into these elements here. And th this mesh doesn't line up either. So now we're all finished. We've gone all the way through. We can go to Analyze. And I can hit Apply. I'll just take the default, which is Steady State. If I would look under my thermal setup, I'd see that. And then I need to read in my results, and I hit Apply, and it says the results were imported into Patran. Then I hit my last tab here, and I can uh, post-process and see my temperatures. And you can see the heat flowing across from one plate to the other. And if you want to visualize those contacts and see how were those hooked up, we have something called a contact visualizer. And I'll just pick both of these. And now you can see how the the nodes are hooked up. Let's actually turn on the elements so you can get a better feel for what it looks like. You can see even though the elements didn't line up, we wove this complex weave of little bar conductors in here. And, and this is very complex math. We basically only allow heat to transfer perpendicular to the joint. We don't let heat go up and down. So we use some uh, complex math in here to allow only uh, one directional heat flow across that joint. So whether they're touching or slightly up in the air, you can um, it will still project one onto the other one. You can see the contacts under this box here when I go to wireframe and you can see uh, they'll run out to all the nodes around any element that it overlaps, although the link to the node right next to it would be stronger than the link to a node further away but it again uses some advanced math to hook up dissimilar meshes and only allow perpendicular uh, heat transfer uh, and if you don't do that you can get errors and, and many codes don't do that so now we're uh, done with part one